Why are there so many poor children around the world? A question that has plagued absolutely no one, but a problem hardly anyone wants to talk about. We can attribute poverty to imperialism, anti-democratic rule, lack of education, and all those things. But the one thing we rarely touch upon is religion. Whether it's Christianity or Islam, its teachings and those who follow the Lord's work here on earth and call it godly, or what is mainly responsible for all the poor young souls starving on the streets. This is apparent in the US, but I want to touch upon more languished locations like the African continent and South and Central America, two regions where you can see the most religious of human beings and, unsurprisingly, the poorest among them. So why is that the case? Again, you can blame colonialism, the scramble, and the anti-communist signatures dotted along these two continents. But those things can be changed and, for the most part, have been done away with. Democracies, although corrupt in some ways, have replaced military governments. But what stayed behind was even worse. Religion. 91% of South and Central Americans identify as Christians. 40% of Africa are comprised of Christians and a larger 45% identify as Muslim. For the purposes of this video, they are both the same. So what do these religions in particular do to cause such poverty, and why is it a deliberate thing? Yes, you heard that right. These religions are keeping these masses of people in poverty on purpose. Let me explain. Genesis 1, 28 says, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Genesis 9, 7 says, Be fruitful and multiply on the earth and increase upon it. Some radical interpretations of Muhammad's sayings, the Hadith, also point towards the advocacy of having lots of kids. And when Western powers conquered and colonized these places, they brought along their teachings. Even today, with Christian and Muslim missionaries bringing their holy books abroad to teach the natives about their god, and the most impressionable of humans being, yes, children. I've noted this in great detail in my other video, Why Poor People Shouldn't Have Kids. It all stems to the parent and their decision to have kids. They, in turn, grow up to live very similar lives to their parents, and if the parents are poor, chances are the kids will grow up to be poor. Religions for decades and decades have been against contraceptives, birth control pills, abortion, and most important of all, condoms. All that smart planning that goes with properly bringing a child into this world are deemed immoral. They quote their holy texts to justify their opposition to limiting the human population. It's not God's plan, they say, from their pulpits and to the natives they preach. Not until 2010, yes, 10 years ago, that the Pope of the Catholic Church made condoms acceptable. For all those years up until then, strict believers of the faith didn't use contraceptives at all. Even today, the message hasn't been as clear. Husbands and wives still don't use condoms or birth control to prevent having kids. As it turns out, for hundreds of years, parents would have 10, 11, 12 kids. My mom's parents had nine children, my dad's parents had six children, partly due to standard norms of the time, but also because of religion. Look at the almost universal Christian South America, and to an even greater extent Central America, where poverty is already rampant because of colonialism and military rule. Similarities are happening in Africa, but at a larger scale. Their children grow up even poorer with bloated bellies due to severe malnutrition. We've all seen that old white guy walk around a shanty village showing kids with flies in their eyes asking you for a donation for some food. Many of these orphans can be attributed to violent revolutions, but just like South and Central America, religion is the one pestering cause. Because these parents have little education and are bombarded with Christian and Muslim missionaries every year because college students in the US want to experience some culture, these poor families are encouraged to worship these holy figures. They read Genesis to learn about the creation story, and they come across chapter 1, verse 28, and again see the same message repeated 8 chapters later. They ask what this fruitful and multiply thing means. And young Timmy, who last month was drunk out of his mind at a party at Liberty University, answered it as God's way of telling his followers to have lots of children. So this naive, I mean native, convert follows the message and has 8, 9, 10 children with his wife. A few die young, but a few remain, all growing up poor and uneducated enough to repeat the same fruitful verse years later. And let's say they do question the meaning of all this. 
Well, governments aren't as free as they are back home. Contraceptives are illegal, and decades of oppressive behavior sees more and more births by poor families, producing poor children. Governments are wising up these days when it comes to personal restrictions, especially in South and Central America, but the church still reigns supreme over personal matters. Abortions are seen as murder, and if the young hunk forgets to wear a condom or that lovely lass forgets her birth control pill, they can't just abort the baby. The baby is brought up in poverty, and just like many people, they repeat their mistakes over and over again, resulting in numerous children in poverty. So you get the story. But then I say this was all done on purpose? The Bible especially makes it very convenient to interpret things any way you want. And for the church, as seen during the Dark Ages and, to a degree today, they interpret things very counterproductive to basic reason. The church, especially the Catholic Church, has long been against birth control of any kind. They encourage procreation to result in a baby. And who does that child follow? Their parents, of course. And a parent who follows the church's teachings will have children who undoubtedly grow up to be a follower of the church as well. And when they go to church or hear that charismatic preacher on TV, they sooner or later hear the magic word, offering. Hell, it's even the Bible. Leviticus 27.30 and Proverbs 3.9 talk about giving tithe to the church, 10% to be exact at least. And I know I'm picking on the Bible a lot, but I know more about it than the Quran, so there's that. A convenient message to make some money. And in some way, the church is a business. We need more money to spread the word of God, and we need to spread the word of God because we need more money. At least that's what televangelists keep telling themselves. So even though this family with nine kids are poor because almost every resource is going to feeding and sheltering everybody, they still pinch every week to give a little bit of money to the church. And if these poor kids survive childhood and start families of their own, that's nine more families who will give money to the church. And if each of these nine families have nine kids each, that's 81 families down the road giving to the church. It's a perpetual money-making machine, especially in poor places like Africa and South and Central America where a mix of poor education and a deep faith in God results in offerings to the church. To conclude things, I'm not telling anyone to stop having a religion or worshiping whoever they want. The purpose of this video is to shine light into why having a lot of children is encouraged, despite being in severe poverty, a unique perspective on life.